Yeah, these are the world's most expensive set of knives, okay? They're made with the philosophy of a planned obsolescence, which means they're designed to go obsolete. They have to be replaced over and over. The average knife is engineered to break or be dull within two years, causing a high replacement cost. Okay, here's why. Wood handles. So wood handles are attractive and new. However, okay, they tend to crack, break, and splinter. They're not made to go in the dishwasher. And they're unsanitary because they absorb odors, moisture, and bacteria. Low-grade plastic, okay, these ones tend to crack, melt, and chip. And they're usually just glued together so they can fall apart when they go in and out of the dishwasher. And they're slippery when wet. The construction of the knife, partial tang knives, which is the part of the blade and the handle, can break easily. Most rivets are made of brass. They can expand, contract, and loosen, causing food particles for food to get trapped so they're unsanitary. Up here, two types of steel. Carbon is one. Carbon will stay sharp longer, but it'll also rust and corrode, so it's very unsanitary. Stainless steel won't rust or corrode, but it also won't stay sharp. Okay, so you have to sharpen it all the time. Straight edge knives, they rip and they tear. Can't be sharpened easily. And straight edge knives have to be constantly sharpened. So the problem with a set of knives like this, or a drawer of knives like this, is they're just never sharp. Can you guess what the solution is to the problem? And that's where you smile, really big. And they go, I don't know, you're probably gonna tell me. <coughs> okay? Okay, and that's what happens there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna role play. So you can go back to page three, and I'm gonna give you some tips on how we're gonna get the most out of role playing your trade. Okay, and one quick example, I just want to ask you a quick question here. On uh, Just before we do that real quick here, it's on the common nine. Um, everybody's used them at some point in time, okay, so they know what they look like, they've had them around their house before. But how many, guys, how many knives do you think? If you see somebody who's in their early, late 20s, early 30s, would you say they're probably going to cook for another 40 years? Yeah. Probably, right? Like 70? Late 60s, something like that. Are they going to cook from 30 to 70? Probably longer than that. Well, maybe longer, but okay, I'll just, can I use 40s as an example? Okay. How many knives do you guys think people have in their house in general? Just knives. Like a family. Like, a, like mom, dad, kids. How many you got? How many do you got? 20. Anyone else? Tell me a number. How many knives? 21. Eight. Eight. We have a family. Mom, dad, kids. Not a bachelor, not a single guy, like a family. How many knives do you think? Did you say 60? Okay, that's a lot. Well, I think that's, that's yeah, that's yeah, all of them. Yeah. It could be, I guess, if you had lots yeah. of, yeah. Okay, Okay. let's take butter knives out. What about just like, you know, cutting knives, kitchen knives, maybe they got to set on their counter. 25 to 25, 30. 15, 20, something like that. Okay, well, what if I use 20 as an example, okay, for the sake of this example? And if they're really cheap knives, right? Really cheap, you could get a really, really cheap knife for like five bucks. You could get it for ten. We know that good quality knives don't cost that, but we're going really, really inexpensive knives. Maybe five, ten, fifteen. So if I use something in the middle and I just said they were like eight bucks. Okay, eight bucks for a knife. How long do we say the average knife is in good condition before you're used? Two years, right? Okay, so you're replacing every two years. So let's use this as a bit of an example. Okay, if the average knife is eight bucks, and they had about 20 knives, they're replacing some more than others, others, let's say, right? Just as an example. If every two years they're buying new knives, if they were, right? That's like 160 bucks every couple years. One's five bucks, one's eight bucks, one's 12, one's seven, right? And they're kind of picking up knives all the time. If they replace them every two years for 40 years, how many times do they replace them? 20 times, right? So 20 times 160 is yeah, 3, over 3,000, right? So you might be going, well, we're not going to buy 20 knives every two years, right? So even if we cut this in half. So do people go out and like spend that today? Not most time, don't they? They actually, how do they do that? They buy one here, one there, one here, one there. And over 40 years, they're like, I spent a lot of money on knives because they broke and this one didn't do that and this, that, right? All that. So just to get you thinking that people, they buy cheap stuff a lot, right? But they end up buying it over and over and over and over and that's what they expect. Yeah. Once you put figures out of that, it's kind of easy to figure out some of them kids and knives are cheap. Oh, totally. Well, that's why it makes sense to buy. Oh, for sure. But most people, like I remember going home to when, I, when I started doing demos and my mom, she had a drawer full of knives. And I was like, 
do you use all these knives? And she's like, mm, something, not really. Well, I go, why do you keep buying them? Well, because that one broke and this one's dull and then I bought this one. I was like, do you ever realize how often you say, like, well, you don't really think about it until you look at it. I was like, yeah, exactly. So, okay, role play. What we're going to do now is we're going to role play a section of the demo. And the purpose of this, okay, we're going to read it to each other. So we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to pair you up with partners. So every section of the demo, you're going to role play. And there's a reason why we do that. You're going to learn it faster than if you just studied it on your own, okay, by actually reading it out loud with somebody else. People typically remember 10% of what they end up hearing, 20% of what they see, okay, 30% of what they write down, 50% of what they study, and 90% of what they do. So like when you're learning a sport, isn't it pretty important you actually are doing the sport, not watching on TV, you know? So today, and to what we do in training a lot is role playing. So it's very interactive and we're gonna role play a lot, every section. So when it's time to cut the penny, just pretend, okay, so we're not actually gonna cut pennies right now. You're gonna use your manual and just keep in mind you're reading from the manual, okay? We're gonna use the book, I'm gonna pair you guys up and I'll give you a blue book on the second time through. Uh, the first time it's just gonna be through the white manual on the demo too. So the blue book the entire time will just be a guide, but right now we're gonna use just the manual. Now, rules of role play. You gotta follow the manual. Even if you feel awkward, you gotta follow the manual. Because by the way, you will feel awkward the first time you do this. You haven't read it yet aloud, so it's gonna sound a little bit different. I want you to go back and forth until I say stop. What that means is that some of you are gonna do this section four times each. Some of you are gonna do it once, some of you are gonna do it three times, some twice. Just want you to keep going until I say, okay, stop. So one person goes next. So let's say, for example, I paired up Kate, uh, Brianna, and I paired up Jane. I paired, paired you guys together, okay? So then I had, Brianna goes first, and she starts. She does pages three and four. So she's reading it to Jamie. Now, if Jamie's looking at her while she's reading it, what's Brianna going to feel she needs to do? Eye contact, look back, right? Because that's kind of weird if someone's looking at you and you're not looking at them. That's just weird, right? So, in order for us to get good at the words, we need to not do the eye, can't eye contact thing in the beginning here because I want you to just focus on the manual. So to do your partner a favor, as Brianna's reading, Jamie's eyes are on the manual following along. Okay, then it's Jamie's turn. She's reading. Brianna's eyes are on the manual, okay? On the manual. So if I walk around, I'm like, eyes on the manual. That's why, because I don't want you to be worried about eye contact right now. It's just getting good at the words, okay? So you want to get comfortable with the material. So don't worry about that. Any athlete that's a professional athlete, they get good at the fundamentals first. And this is just getting good at the fundamental, which is the demo. And it's super easy and it works really, really well. Okay? Focus on listening. Don't give your partner a hard time. That's not where we're at. We're all new. We're all in the same shoes. So we don't need to do that. And uh, the best demos, you guys, people ask me sometimes, they go, should I maybe read it and then put it in my own words and recite it? I'm like, no. The best demos are the ones that are short, simple, short, fun, short. Informative, short, enthusiastic, and short, okay? So don't add more than you have to. So today, don't read more than what's on the book, okay? Because we don't need to worry about any of that stuff. So you just want to stick to what's on the book. You don't need to introduce yourself and do all that. You need to start where it says, like I said on the phone, and you start there. And you go all the way through page three and page four. Anytime we get into showing cut coaches, pretend, okay? The main thing is the words. Sometimes I play music while you're role playing and training. That's because it sounds kind of funny when someone's sitting next to you saying the exact same words. So sometimes the music helps to distract. If we don't need it, we won't use it, but if we do, we won't use it, okay? So for the sake of the first time, the way we're sitting, I'm gonna have the three of you guys at this table all go across from each other. Okay, that's your partner. Okay, then over here what we'll do is I'll have actually, Nicole and Ryan will just kind of pull your chairs over to this table a little bit, and you guys can sit there. Okay, then Angela and Dan, you guys will role play. And then what we'll do here is Devin and I turn around and you'll role play with Kevin. And then Robbie and Nancy, you guys will role play with Okay? Now, how are we going to decide who goes first? Whoever has the closest birthday, okay? Either coming up or it just passed. Whoever has, the, whoever has the closest birthday, okay? So when you're done your first time, let me know and I'll come give you a binder, okay? Okay, fire away. Well, <laughs> 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 I'm like, all right.